a mini castle in a mini land. The Tarmac Championship steps out Side Island once a year for the super fast stages on the Isle of Man. Sadly, however, we no longer get a chance to see the super fast cars of the Toshiba series from the Sony Manx International event. The regulations for the British Open and Irish competitions have grown apart, and it is only the Group N and Formula 2 entrants who get a chance to run with the factory teams. But you don't have to dig too deep to find some Irish interest in the entry, especially amongst the pace note readers. Last time we talked, you, you just won the Ulster. Can you do it in the Manx? I'd like to think we could. Uh, obviously, on the island, we're still learning. Neil's not really 100% committed to the car, even with the Ulster performance. We never got a chance there really to gauge our speed against the other guys because of the early accidents and demise. So this is this is going to be a big education as well. We'd like to think we're going to be up there with Gwyneth and Mark and Martin, obviously the local specialist, but we don't know until the end of the first stage. The Welsh are in Castle Town to cheer on Gwyneth Evans, but our lad and his English driver Neil Weirden start where they left off in Ulster and lead the rally. Castle Town is the traditional Manx showpiece. New seems to be calling the notes very effectively for Mr. Weirden. But sadly, their euphoria doesn't last for long, as the alternator warning light is flashing, and they'll slip to fourth by the end of the night stages. There's good and bad news for Seat, as Gwyndaf Evans will lead by the end of the evening. But the Spanish manufacturer will have lost Gardemeister and their swift lady Barbara Armstrong, seen here. Renault aren't smiling either, as their new British champion Tapio Laukonen will also crash out. However, Martin Rowe, who's been the Manx International winner for the last two years, is in second place, exactly nine seconds behind the leader. Neil McShay is in the dark right from the start, and Citroën Saxo only last to the sixth stage. Champion navigator Mike Gibson has one of the most interesting rides of all in the sensational Golf Diesel. The car is amazingly quick in Neil Simpson's hands. Neil and Mike seem to be one of the few who are not amazed to read that they're in sixth place after six stages. Our Toshiba Tarmac Formula 2 representative, Ollie O'Donovan, takes us for a high-speed ride through Castletown in his ex-Kenny McKinstry Formula 2 Escort. But he's lucky to be on the island as the engine expired during testing. McKinstry Motorsport have had to do an overnight rebuild. This is real street racing. And now for the town square. is moving nicely. Connor Bruton, as always, on the notes. And although they can't expect to be on the pace of the works cars, the London-based Irishman is up to 24th place overnight and adding to his chances of taking the Tarmac Formula 2 title. Both Eugene Megan and Seamus Leonard, who lead Group N in the Tarmac series, have decided to give round six a miss. But there's still plenty of Irish showroom interest. Chris Patterson navigates the new British Production Cup champion, David Higgins. It's a good opportunity for us to go as hard as we possibly can against the F2 cars. Obviously, the F2 cars are going to be much quicker on dry tarmac, but um, hopefully we can have a good one. The Ulster Rally Group N winner Derek McGarrity gets off to a flying start. He's second only to Milner. He sees David Higgins as his main threat. And obviously David's going to go extremely fast here, but I would have liked a bit more of a racky to, to get near those speed out. Robert Woodside is in a second Barrett Subaru. Things have not gone according to plan in testing. Just caught us out, put a wheel in the grass and just sheer shock to both Roy and myself. We thought we'd got away where we spin. Just in the last minute, just clipped the, the pile of soil and turned upside down. We only broke one window in the roll, but uh, we were actually up, trapped upside down in the car and couldn't get out. Richie Holfeld from Dublin completes the Irish interest in his works prepared Mitsubishi Evo 5. But it's Johnny Milner, a frequent Irish visitor, who's setting the group end pace in his Toyota. There's an added incentive for the production men they've set up their own attack challenge with a prize fund of £9,000. Day two and Gwyndaf continues to lead, but a damaged suspension strut will drop the seat behind Martin Rowe's flying Renault Megane. 
The retirements continue to come. John Kittelato, who will lose his Vauxhall drive to Mark Higgins, retires as a result of this damage. And Mark Higgins will abandon his Volkswagen in stage 11 when the car goes on fire. This means that Neil Weirden and our man Trevor Agnew jump up to second during the day. Neil has already re-signed for Vauxhall after an excellent first year as a professional and he's 15 seconds behind the local man at the end of the day. Our other top co-driver, Mike Gibson, is keeping his head down as Neil Simpson guides the whispering golf up to fourth place. Our Formula 2 men, Oliver O'Donovan and Connor Bruton, are gaining places as others flounder. But signs are not good. As on stage eight, north of Ramsey, they break a drive shaft, exiting this hairpin. But they manage to drag their ailing escort now with one wheel drive out of the stage. Their Irish Formula 2 rivals, Roy White from Tipperary with Mike Patterson on the notes, are having a great event, getting their Astro into the top 20. But the engine will blow on stage 15. Back on board with Ollie, the drive shaft is repaired, but we're in trouble again. However, as we know, Ollie is a survivor, and the Planet Ring Escort needs to survive to take the tarmac Formula 2 crown. Caution, danger, one left into two right, down into deep four, danger. Two right, deep four. One left over crest, now one right. Over fly and finish, 20. Johnny Milner continues to give it everything he threw then. Despite some turbo problems during the afternoon, Johnny and Duncan McMath are looking good for that big group end payout. David Higgins is now out of the equation. We had it in the first stage this morning and we blew the turbo in the second stage out this morning, so we just had to call it a day. Unfortunately, it sucked some dirt into the intake and uh, sucked it into the engine, so it would have been too expensive to carry on. Robert Woodside, seen here in second, gets caught up in Mark Higgins' accident. On stage 11, I think it was, Mark had crashed. The, the stage had been cancelled, but unfortunately nobody decided to tell us that until it was just a little bit too late. Uh, we were right on the scene of the accident, more or less. And a very, very completely flat in fifth gear, left hand bend, just about 200 feet before the accident. Uh, we just turned into the corner, not knowing, of course, what, what was ahead of us. And some guy jumped out of the left hand hedge, waving his arms, and just took our concentration away, and we had to more or less turn to avoid him which resulted in us having a, a fairly big accident. Um, clipped the wall on the right-hand side and put us out through the hedge on the left. But with the stage been cancelled, we had time to get the car back out and eventually got it repairable to get back to service. The guys fixed it in service. Unbelievable job they did. There was four corners in the car all pointing in different directions and the, the car came out of service straight. But there was a slight problem with the rear right, which they just hadn't realised at the time. And, into the next stage, and it just kept. There was a problem. The actual, the rear right hand corner of the car went on fire. Uh, I think there was like a bearing it had caught. A, be a bearing wasn't. A bearing wasn't quite right, and uh, it ended up the disc was moving. And the disc caught fire, and the calibers caught fire, and ended up there was a fire. And we decided that was the end. We didn't want to go any further. So Derek McGarrity moves into second spot, but he's now using a standard gearbox, and that will only last until stage 15. <laughs> now it's Terry Harriman's driver's turn to take over that second group end spot. Ryan Champion is in a Mitsubishi Evolution 4. Others in the showroom category seem to be getting a little confused. It's this way, Richard. Richard Tuttle, that is. This way, towards Gordon Dunn's camera.
The Manx event also counts towards the Toshiba Equim Tarmac Historic Championship and Desi Nutt and John Keatley had the entry along with Championship leader Martin Boyle. Keatley swept to victory on the opening round in Galway. But the one to take note of was the former racing driver Martin Boyle. Desi Nutt sat out the circuit enabling John Keatley and Morris Beckett to go two up on the rivals. But at the end of the marathon event, that Anglia was in the results again, and this time the Balamani driver was up into second place. John Keatley made it three in a row in the Glen Eagles Rally of the Lakes, with Philip Wiley and Jim Howe in second place in their MGB. Alan Courtney, always a star in the Kerry Mounds of his four-door Cortina taxi, found that this year was no exception, but Mr. Consistency was less than a minute behind in fourth, Martin Boyle was piling up the points. Desi Nutt and Jeremy McBride were back with a vengeance in Denigor, and they dominated the event. And you've guessed it, Martin Boyle was on the podium again, and not only that, he moved into the Shiva Historic Championship lead. On the Stenerline Ulster rally, it was John Keatley's turn to take a break, and Desi Nutt took full advantage to take maximum points. But that upright Anglia was proving to be quite a bugbear for the sleek Stuttgart machines. And Martin's third place in the Ulster lanes gave him a 19-point advantage going to the Isle of Man. We're into the position now of having to drop scores, so it's not just clear-cut yet. Depends how the rest of them do in this event. So what's your plan for this event then? Oh, just flat out as usual and hope the rest of them break down or something. <laughs> Ironically, it's Martin's Anglia that suffers its first breakdown of the year on the Isle of Man. So John Keatley and Morris Beckett get their fourth win in the series. And as for Desi Nutt, who was quickest out of the blocks, well, he had to retire with engine problems. And in second, the overshooting Philip Wiley, who's run up for the third time this year. while Alan Courtney took fourth place in his new two-door Cortina. So the historic championship goes to the final round in Cork, all square with Martin Boyle and John Keatley, 66 points each. The big question is, can we again take a chapter out of history? Again, witness David beating Goliath. A reliable run around the southwestern stages could give the 1999 Toshiba Historic Rally Championship an Old Testament ending. Ireland also triumphed in the Manx Trophy, with Sean McArdle winning in the Toronto de Paul Toyota. We may not have Bertie Fisher, Kenny McKinstry and Frank Maher challenging for outright victory these days on the island, but we certainly have plenty to be proud of. Veteran Harry Cathcart for Fermanagh is third in class 12. Billy Gamble from Strabane is second in class 11. Alan Spears from Market Hill wins class 10. Seventeenth overall and fifth in class 8 is enough to give Oliver O'Donovan and Conor Bruton the Shiba Formula 2 title. Richie Hallfeld and Ian Grinrod bring their rally on Germany Mitsubishi Evo 5 home in 10th place overall and an excellent third overall in Group N. The Dubliner beating Richard Tuttle's Subaru over the last few stages to get on the podium. Terry Harriman guides Ryan Champion to second in Group N and Johnny Milner and Duncan McMath are in the money as the attack challenge winners in Group N. For Neil Simpson and Mike Gibson, it's a dream ending in second place in the Diesel Golf. We came here, we wanted to finish in the top five again like Ulster, but at the same time we're wishing for a top three and we're having that, fortunately with Neil crashing out this morning and then Gwinda's problem and things just fell our way slightly, so we'll take it while it's going. Bearden and McHugh's demise came with five stages to go, while Gwyndaff retired two stages later, leaving Martin Rowe and Derek Ringer with a three-minute victory, Martin's third in succession. 
Will the Manx International come back to full Toshiba Equium status in the new millennium? Or will it disappear from the Tarmac series? Difficult decisions have to be made.